All right, so as we continue to talk about traits that are linked to the sex chromosomes, another X-linked trait that um, many people actually think is um, is not X-linked is actually colorblindness in humans. So the ability to see orange, um, or not orange, but red or green in humans. So this is actually a gene that is located on the X chromosome. Uh, therefore, it can actually be passed from either the um, from either mom or dad. So, in when we look at a normal uh, female uh, that is crossed with a colorblind male, um, keep in mind very similarly to the previous example in Drosophila, the female can only pass on uh, really one chromosomal combination, so an X plus here. And then um, the colorblind male, which is in colorblind is designated by C on the X chromosome, um, can um, that individual really can only pass on either an X or uh, an XC or a Y. So in the F1 generation, we end up um, getting either a normal colored vision female um, because the X plus even if she inherits the XC and is a carrier the X plus combination is dominant, so she will not be colorblind. And then if we end up getting a male out of that cross, um, that individual will be normal um, color vision for the male. So, but on the, the opposite side of that, um, in the reciprocal cross, we can get a normal vision female, but um, she's gonna be the carrier of the colorblind gene and then in our male because the the um, the colorblind female actually passed on to um, the XC genotype and that XC genotype then pairs up with the Y for the male that male by default is going to be colorblind so in the normal cross both males and females have normal color vision but in the reciprocal cross, when a colorblind female is mated to a non-color blind male, the females have normal color vision, but the males are always going to be colorblind. Some other link, sex-linked traits include uh, uh, Y-linked traits. So this is actually called hairy ear syndrome. So this is a gene that is on the Y chromosome, and we can actually see um, this gene being transmitted from fathers to sons because it can only go from Y chromosome to Y chromosome. The X chromosome doesn't have anything to do with the expression of this gene. So this gene um, really results in additional proteins being produced and additional hair follicles being produced um, in the air area, in the ear areas, sorry. All right, so let's switch gears and talk a little bit about um, Z-linked characteristics, so keep in mind the um, ZZ, ZW sex determination system is a chromosomal determination system that we see in a lot of avian species. Okay, so just keep in mind that in the avian species, the female and the male are actually switched um, from what we know in the human species. So the, the uh, females are going to be heterozygous here and the males are going to be homozygous. So in our parent generation in peacocks, if we have a blue female, um, her genotype is going to be ZCA+, and, um, and then uh, she's also going to pack a W genotype as well. And we bred that to a cameo male, which is homozygous ZCA for the cameo phenotype. And then in the reciprocal cross, we get two very different looking individuals. So our Camino female is going to have shorter tail feathers than our Camino male. And then our blue male is going to have the really beautiful, long, colorful tail feathers, which our blue females do not have. So this, these Z-linked traits are really going to be expressed fully when associated with the male chromosome. So as we look at the F1 generation from the, the parents that we had a ZCA 
um, W individual and our dad was homozygous CCA that resulted in 50% male and 50% female offspring. The male offspring ended up um, having the CA plus and just the CA um, alleles associated with the Z chromosome that resulted in the beautiful blue long-tailed males. And then the cameo female is going to be a carrier of the ZCA allele and the W. And then in our reciprocal cross, we get a blue male, um, similarly to what we saw in the previous example, and we get a blue fem female as well. But when we get to the F2 generation, that's where we get a lot of genetic variety in our, phenoty in our phenotypes. So we can have... Um, a quarter of the individuals are actually going to be blue male, a quarter are going to be blue female, um, a quarter are going to be cameo male, and a quarter are going to be cameo male. Um, so, and then the F2 generation, we actually have a, a 2 to 1 to 1 ratio. So we've got 50% um, of the offspring that are going to be blue uh, males, and then 25% that are going to be blue females, and 25% that are going to be cameo females. So just keep in mind that the, the big letter, the Z here, refers to the sex chromosome, and then the small level letter that is a superscript, that really refers to the version of the allele for the color gene that these individuals have. All right, so our, the last section um, of this um, chapter is talking about dosage composition. And so dosage composition is um, where we see protein concentration actually playing a critical role in the development of some sort of measurable trait. Okay, so dosage compensation is where we actually see an, an, um, an effort to equalize protein concentrations between male and female genotypes. Okay, so if we have a dosage composition of 1x, um, then, or, um, of one X chromosome present. So for example, females have two X chromosomes. If one of those X chromosomes becomes deactivated, then we're gonna see some or some compensation take place. And this is really true in all mammals. So one of the classic examples that we see dosage compensation occur in is in our calico cats. So um, the Phenot or the genotype for a non-orange or a black cat is X+, plus, and the genotype for an orange cat is XO. And when a female is actually um, born, they actually will end up with a patchy distribution of color. So they've got patchy black, patchy orange, and we call that phenotype a tortoiseshell phenotype. And the reason for this is because of the random inactivation of the X chromosome in the female. So only females, um, and, and even more so, only females that are heterozygous will actually be tortoiseshell in phenotype. Um, likewise, calico cats are also going to have um, random deactivation of that second X chromosome, and that is only going to happen in females. So if you see a calico cat, you automatically know that she is female. This um, concept really developed um, from the, the research that was done um, identifying bar bodies. So bar bodies are really extra X chromosomes in the nucleus of a cell. So the Lyon hypothesis states that within a female cell, one X chromosome is actually going to become inactive, and that's going to happen very randomly. So the X inactivation, uh, or the um, inactivated X, are then become functionally from a hemizygous standpoint. Um, so at the cellular level, um, the X-linked gene is still going to produce some of the proteins associated with the portion of the X chromosome that has not been uh, inactivated. So these photos are a little bit hard to see. The pictures in the book are a little bit better, but you can see that we actually have two bar or two X chromosomes here. Um, so we've got one um, bar body, and then in this cell, this is a male cell. There's no bar body present. 
So keep in mind, bar bodies refer to extra X chromosomes. And for table 4.3 in your book um, really has a good listing of the conditions that are associated with having bar bodies associated with the genotype. So for example, if we have um, one extra bar body here, so our X and our Y are normal, um, but the extra X is a bar body that can result in Klinefelter syndrome. If we have um, two bar bodies present, that can also be Klinefelter syndrome. And then if we get into a situation where an individual has three X chromosomes, that's going to be triplo X uh, syndrome as well. So keep in mind, bar bodies are extra, or the presence of extra X chromosomes. All right, so an example to um, kind of work through just to make sure that you understand how many bar bodies are actually present is shown here in this slide. So if we have just a normal XY genotype for a male, no bar bodies are actually present. We have an XX geno XXY genotype. One bar body is present because we have one extra copy of the X chromosome and so on. So I just want to um, give you a little bit of additional information um, as we work towards the end of this chapter. So on average, um, if we ask ourselves what proportion of the X-linked genes in the first individual is the same as that as the second individual, and we're looking at a male and his mother, the answer is then going to be 100% the same because the male offspring is going to inherit the X chromosome from, or at least one of his, or his X chromosome from the mother because the father can only pass on the Y chromosome. Um, if we are looking at the proportion of X-linked genes between a female and her mother, she's going to get one of her X chromosomes from mom and one from dad. So the offspring has a total of two X chromosomes, but she only identifies 50% with mom because only one of those X chromosomes came from mom. Um, a male and his father is going to have um, zero um, percentage or zero uh, proportion of zero of the X genes um, actually associated with his father because he only got the X or the Y chromosome from his dad, not the X. Um, if we look at the relationship in the X chromosome from a female and her father, that's going to be 50% as well because that offspring female is going to have two X chromosomes. One has to come from dad. And then if we look at a female and her sister, um, if they get the same X chromosome from dad, then they're going to have 50% similarity. Okay, so there's a 50-50 chance that they could actually get the same X chromosome from mom. Um, therefore, the range um, uh, is anywhere between 50% to 100%, just depending on the chance. All right, so that is the end of Chapter 4. Um, and just realize there's a lot of material with Chapter 4, so please make sure that you are reading in your book as well as doing the online lectures.